Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so now we have a black belt session uh, from two of our speakers who are like the architect by designation. Uh, they are here with a really interesting session around how they built a platform that can run old DOS games in a container and hosting those containers in a cloud. So please welcome Blaise Stewart from Intel and Patrick Devine from Docker onto the stage. Cool, so we're gonna do um, two very wildly different um, halves of our, of our session. Um, Blaze is gonna kick it off with um, some stuff which is pretty cool um, with a Kubernetes cluster and running old DOS games on it. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some really crazy stuff that I've been doing with um, Unicode gaming and stuff running inside of containers. Okay, so um, I'm Blaze uh, Patrick. So. What uh, I want to show you this uh, this afternoon is we want to look at the some some different ways to use Docker. So there's traditional like the way that we typically use Docker is all about uh, containerizing applications, databases, uh, web servers, and all that kind of stuff. So um, one of the so what I wanted whenever I built this was was a little bit nostalgic, a little bit, you know, I wanted something that was interesting other than just showing Nginx with a web page or something like that. So building a demo that was uh, something other than just hello world and a, and a web page or just hello world and a console app or something like that. So um, just started brainstorming some ideas and I was like, well, why, why not build something like a retro gaming platform in Docker containers? So it was just a wild idea, I threw it out there and it was actually for a meetup I was speaking at a few months ago and then and then the, 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 the call for papers came out and I was like, well, maybe I could uh, do something with this at DockerCon, and, and I threw it out there, not thinking they would even buy into it, but yeah, actually they picked it, and I was like, cool. So um, with that in mind, I was like, all right, let's just show some stuff. It's exactly what we did, what I did. So the um, retro gaming in Docker is really no different than you would do in any other Linux platform, so you do basically, um, I think you don't want it this one. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Yep. So, so this first demo here is um, the first app that I put into Docker Container was Trade Wars. So if you've never played Trade Wars, I'm seeing some people smiling out there. So <laughs> I, I think some people know what this is. This is a game that was written in the late. 80s, so this is you know 30 year old game, and uh, if you were into the the bulletin board scene with ANSI graphics and all of its glory, you would have probably have played Trade Wars at some point. I was eight years old, nine years old when I was playing this game, and on my mighty 286, I, I played the hell out of this game. I like love it day. too. <clears throat> And so this is the, the splash screen that for it, and then you could log into this. And it's a space trading game where you could create planets and trade and build up your empire and get better ships and all this other goodies on uh, this game. And it was multiplayer, and that was kind of revolutionary for that time too. You, you could have multiple people logging into the same DBS and interactively playing this game, and uh, it's just a really fun game. I, I would do, it'd be hard to do it justice in a session like this, so I'm just gonna show you the splash screen on this one. So um, this really got me into online gaming later in life, but this game was just a lot of fun. Um, and if you uh, ever worked in a corporation and uh, you were um, bored, you probably played these retro games. Uh, so uh, with these retro games, you know, we know Minesweeper and Solitaire. This is actually, again, this is Windows 3.1. This is containerized Windows 3.1 running, uh, you know, a DOS game, uh, running games in Windows 3.1, like Minesweeper and Solitaire. And this isn't a screenshot. You could actually, you know, doink around with this thing if I can find my mouse cursor. Um, so there it is. And, uh, you know, we, it's playable, so you can play Solitaire or Minesweeper, and it's actually running DOS box behind the scenes, and it's bubbling this all the way back up to the browser. I'm gonna show you the stack in a minute, but uh, again, um, we talk about we talk about Dockerizing uh, legacy applications. Well, it doesn't get much more legacy than the stuff we're showing you in here, okay? So uh, if you have an old Windows 3.1 application that you need to put into Docker, it's quite possible to do this. So yes, you can go back to the, the glory days of DOS before uh, anybody even knew how to spell Linux and start running Docker applications, uh, Dockerizing applications of that age. So definitely have a spin on legacy applications in Docker 
here. Um, the second, another application that, and as time progressed, our, our, the gains got better from you know, our trade wars and, uh, and Solitaire, which most people were very familiar with in the late early 90s and even with Windows 95, to some other games like um, uh, this one, Prince of Persia. So if you've ever, uh, this was a very fond memory for, again, from my childhood, so fifth grade, sixth, fifth grade, I, I played this game, you know, all the time. And it's, uh, it actually runs fairly well on uh, this, this platform here. So this is uh, streaming data back from the, uh, the uh, console. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm, I'm gonna oh die now. Um, Not used to Mac OS. No, oh, yeah. So there you go. I died um, playing Prince of Persia, but the you know the animation is pretty smooth and all the uh, the retro gaming going on with this particular game, and then um, the th the third game or the fourth game that I wanted to look at here is this one. Let me refresh this uh, to reconnect. Uh, is Commander Keen, and this is another fond memory from my childhood. I love this game too. Um, it came out like 1990, so you know we're looking at like late 80s, early 90s here. This game's 25 years old. 20? How? No, that was like that's almost 30 years ago. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, but in any case, in software's first game, yeah, for Doom and Castle. So Wolfenstein. if you if you've ever played like. Doom or Castle Wolfenstein, and those kind of games were kind of set, those created the PC gaming industry in a lot of ways, but it was started with this game right here. And it's many, it's not seven or eight sequels now, and uh, it's uh, just one of those retro games that everybody will start thinking about. Uh, if you talk about what games you played on your PC 25, 30 years ago, Commander Keen, Prince of Persia, uh, Doom, Duke Nukem, a lot of those old, old school games, you could actually run all of these in a container just like by doing the same thing. So what does this look like um, behind the scenes? Uh, it's really not that complicated. Uh, we, what basically what, uh, we, um, what this looks like is, uh, let's present here. And um, so it looks something like this. So the, the, the technical implementation of this is, is really not the, uh, is really not the, the meat of this. I just wanted to show you what the stack actually looked like in the container. You have a um, container, and inside of that is, is DOSBox, which if you're not familiar with DOSBox, it's actually a, um, a DOS emulator. It's a, it's a hardware slash operating system emulator uh, for running old DOS uh, applications. And um, in, in what it does is you, can mount, can mount a folder into it and, and then create a C drive, and then with that you can uh, you know run just about any get DOS game or even Windows 95 or Windows 3.1 in that uh, DOS box. But to to get DOS box up back to the browser was my goal. I wanted to make sure that you could stream what DOS box was capturing all the way up into the browser because that was just it would be too easy to install just DOS box and expose that. I wanted to, something a little bit more robust. So uh, on top of that, you need an X org and uh, X server, and then you need uh, some kind of desktop manager. And there's a really stripped down one called Rat Poison. It's uh, just kind of a no Chrome, no window Chrome uh, desktop manager, so you can install that. And uh, that's how I was able to get the, uh, that, that component figured out and keep it really lightweight rather than installing like GNOME or uh, KDE or XL, L, XDE or something like that. And then you need somewhere to write to, so you need a, some kind of graphics card or frame buffer, so there's another package uh, pr project out there called Virtual Frame Buffer. So that's what that, the next component was. And then on top of that, you have VNC Server. So VNC Server can hook into that. And then with VNC, uh, you can then stream that over a network. Well, to get that into a browser, you need some way, that, something that the browser can talk to. And that's where WebSexify uh, comes in. And it's basically just a WebSocket wrapper around the VNC implementation. So the, the and then on top of, with that, you can have a VNC client now running inside of a browser, it connects to that VNC server and then renders the stream output from VNC into the Canvas API inside of your browser. And so that's, a, that's uh, everything starting in DOSBox, bubbling up through X all the way up through VNC, WebSoxify, and then back to the browser onto the Canvas API. So there's a lot involved in this stack, so it's actually uh, a lot more than just running DOSBox, but uh, at the end of the day, you end up with something that uh, you can deploy DOS games into. So just basically mount that into, copy the game into your, uh, your container, and then um, you can deploy this stack and your game's up and running. So what I ended up doing is 
creating some kind of like Kubernetes cluster to run this on. So uh, each one of those uh, containers you saw is actually running on a Kubernetes stack running on Azure. Uh, so I deployed AKS out there and then just uh, took that same container image and just dropped a couple different games and Windows 3.1 into. And then uh, put, a, put a proxy in front of it and then put it something I call the deployer into that. And it ends up looking a lot like a pretty typical uh, Kubernetes application, but in this case it's just running old DOS games. So my, my intent was behind this was to kind of get something downstream, uh, thinking about how to use Docker for maybe something like windowed applications or GUI applications, but render them in such a way that you could really take advantage of a browser. And so the, the ultimate goal of this is this is kind of POC at this point, but is to have a multi-user, multi-tenant uh, environment to where you could re literally run like desktop applications. A user logs in, they have a, a screen that looks something like uh, like this, if I can make this work, like this. And uh, so they would basically, a user would log in and they would get all their applications that look like this, and then this would be one container, which I call the deployer, and then when I click on this, these uh, buttons, it just launches an application into the, uh, into a browser window. So, and you can uh, run that browser uh, app, like that browser based uh, X app in a, in, a, in a browser context without having to worry about managing a bunch of windows in that browser context. So, if I want to launch another one, I just simply click on that and it pulls up the second and third and fourth containers. So, spinning up those in the background when you click that. So, it's hooked into the, 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 the Kubernetes API. But the point of this is not to, uh, it's to really think about different ways to use uh, uh, Kubernetes, use Docker, and use uh, the, the kind of the things that we know already, and plus combine that with maybe some non traditional ca use cases for uh, Docker and Docker containers. And my, in this case, uh, I just wanted to use old DOS games, but uh, you, I could really see this growing into something a little a lot bigger than uh, than what what you could obviously do with just games. You could put like word processors or uh, any other kind of like CRM applications or anything that's a lot more boring than these games are and then run it in a business context and give value back to your company, but you really have it in a very secure environment without having to like have VNC clients installed and all that. But at the end of the day, it's just really fun to do uh, Docker gaming and I use Docker for gaming and using old DOS apps. But now Patrick's going to show you something completely different, and his stuff is just going to knock your socks off. So um, let's let him show you his, how he approached the same uh, Docker uh, approach to uh, retro gaming, but just completely a uh, completely different uh, path. Yeah, so it's going to knock your socks off, but it's a pretty boring demo to start. So, um, yeah, I actually, my, so my job um, at Docker is I'm actually a functional architect. Um, and so, like, my job is really about looking at the way that we do user interaction and trying to get things like um, the way that our user experience works and kind of like from a, a technical point of view. Actually, my very first game, or my very first uh, job out of school um, was writing Super Nintendo games. So it's kind of like, runs in the blood or something, I don't know. Um, but what I thought I would show is, um, the boring demo first. And this is kind of what got me thinking about um, doing other stuff. And I don't know if people have all tried this. Um, this is the Hello World container app. Um, I, I die a little bit inside every time I see this. <laughs> there's like, there's nothing going on. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, that's not that fun. So, you know, being an engineer and thinking about uh, how do I do user interaction, how do I make things more interactive, um, I decided to write a sprite library. So, um, but it had to run in, um, let's see if we get here, it had to run in Docker containers. So, this is, let's get Moby going. So, there's Moby. I think we need some more Mobys. <laughs> Yeah, so this is just ASCII art, and um, I don't know, maybe there's something we could do with that. Um, so, um, let's see, we we'll go back here. So what's going on there is, um, what a sprite library actually does, and all the stuff that, that Blaze was showing as well, is it's really just taking an object which is on the screen and moving it around, and it's really simple behind the scenes. Um, all we're doing is clearing the screen, 
updating them where those um, where those mobies are, and then um, and then actually just drawing them again. And all the game logic for any 2D game that you ever play just works the same way as this. And you just keep doing it in a loop. And um, if it's fast enough, it just looks like it's, I don't know, it's just magic. So um, once you write a sprite library, you kind of need to write games to go with it. So um, the first thing I thought about was, um, it was kind of like a, a challenge that someone had given me a long time ago, which was they said that they could write um, Tetris in a weekend uh, for the Super Nintendo. And um, I just thought at the time like that there was no way that you could do that. So um, I decided to go and actually write Tetris. And well, I was thinking of what text game could I write with this thing? And, and it made me think of the original Tetris that Alexei Pajitnov wrote in like 1984. Um, this is actually written for the, um, it was the Electronica 60, which is a Soviet knockoff of the PDP-11 uh, mainframe. And um, I guess they just made it working with Cyrillic text, but I thought that was pretty cool. So um, I decided to um, do a, an homage to, to this, and uh, I wrote this other thing. Uh, um, by the way, you guys can try all this stuff out as well as we go, if you're interested. Um, all of it is up on Docker Hub as well. So this is Tetromino Electronica, uh, my homage to Tetris. And, um, it's a little bit of Cyrillic in there, but not too much. Um, and so this is working Tetris in a Docker container. So um, let me see. So oh, I missed the lineup too. But um, so what's going on? I, I actually I, I don't know if anyone's actually has watched it, but uh, there's the classic Tetris Gaming World Championships. I forget exactly what it's called. Um, I got really into it for a while, and um, these guys are like totally insane, and they're playing like NES Tetris like all the time at like these insane speeds. Um, and I got totally obsessed with it, and um, so wrote this thing. And I actually the timings on this, um, I wanted to make sure that were they were exactly the same as the timings that were in classic NES Tetris. So the way that I got that to work um, was kind of the same thing that I was showing before. So it's that same, um, same three steps where we're clearing the screen and updating the sprites and then drawing them again. Um, but the key point was in order to, to make the frames actually like arrive at the same time, you kind of have to sleep in the middle of that and then you just wait until the, the, the timer has elapsed for the 60th of the second to get 60 frames per second. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but um, as Blaze showed you with uh, Trade Wars 2002, we can do better than, than just ASCII text. So I started thinking a lot about ANSI and you know, how much I loved like, ANSI art back in the day. Actually, there were not a lot of uh, ANSI games, though. So, um, but I started thinking a lot about, um, about Unicode. Like, we don't have ANSI anymore, but we do have Unicode. And there's actually a lot of like, block characters that exist inside of Unicode. And, and I started thinking about if I have one Unicode character, I can actually like light up different quadrants of what that block is. And if you just kind of like logically or things inside of it, you can actually like, you know, make parts of a, of a picture. And if you have enough of those, you can actually build up a real image. So that would be like the same as, as this guy over here. Um, and then another part of that is that I don't actually have a, a way of like drawing um, Unicode art very easily. There's no like, uh, there's no paint program or anything like that. So, as part of the the GoLang sprite library, it actually um, does interpolation where you can just like draw inside of a text file with just like putting characters in there, um, and then when it interpolates it, those are all just like you can see parts of where those characters are, where it's lighting up different parts of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this works really great in, in Linux. Um, this is where like Linux users are all up in their ivory towers and laughing at everyone else. Um, <laughs> Unicode is a real pain in the ass for like Windows and Mac OS. Um, I know I'm using a, um, a Mac here, but uh, this was a little bit of a pain to get going. So if people want to try this out, there's a, a couple of caveats around it. Um, the first one is that the standard, you need a, um, you, you don't want a current font, you want a monospaced font in order for this to work. Most of the fonts are just terrible that are out there when it comes to Unicode block characters. So um, what I did is I used the Menlo font. It's a, it's a pretty decent, um, pretty decent monospaced font that, that you can 
set it to eight point because it needs to be relatively small. Like the, the resolution on this, you can actually make it scale to whatever you want, but you want it to be pretty, uh, a pretty uh, small point size for that. The other thing is that um, in Linux, it gets the line spacing correct, uh, and it doesn't in Mac OS. So if anyone knows anyone at Apple that can like yell at them, please do that. <laughs> Make them fix it. Um, and the other part is that terminal is kind of crappy. So um, use iTerm2 if you want to do this. Um, and the reason why you want to do that is that it has GPU acceleration like built into it. So you can actually do um, hardware accelerated Unicode. <laughs> I guess it's cool, right? So um, yeah, making this work in Windows, it kind of is the same as Mac OS. Actually, we got it working right before this demo as well, too. But um, I think, Blaze, you got it working with Alacrity, um, which has hardware acceleration, um, but it's kind of a pain. You still need to set up the Unicode points, uh, like these code points, to get things to work often, depending on the font that you're using. Um, and then just pray, and it's going to work. It's a real, it's kind of a pain. But, okay, so we're going to go and, um, actually, let's use iTerm2, because it works the best here. And um, we're going to run, this is, we're going to return to 1979. This is text invaders. So this is all you know, you're actually I'm mixing like characters here. Like you can see, like I've got normal characters that are in there, but then the block characters as well. And so this is uh, this is Space Invaders running entirely in Unicode. And you can actually do a um, you can like, like just copy and paste the, the different guys in there. It's pretty crazy. It'll actually get speed up as well too. Although apparently I'm terrible on stage playing at Text Invaders. Um, all right, so uh, 1979, we didn't have any colors, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. Um, let's go to the 80s now. Um, you can use the foreground and the background colors to actually like, like paint different parts of, of those um, quadrants, um, which is pretty cool. And you can actually, um, you can actually use, there's a, the X11 palette actually has 256 colors in it, so you can, you can, this is actually like more than the original Nintendo Entertainment System, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, like, it's kind of like not as, I think it's like, it's actually better than EGA, it's better than CGA, it's better than like most of the other um, formats that are out there, or that were out at the time. Um, but unfortunately, you can only do two, two uh, pixels in a, in a, like one one character itself, or two two different colors in in one character, um, which leads to some artifacting, which you'll probably see in the next thing. But um, it's okay; it doesn't doesn't hurt it that much. Um, all right. So this demo, um, the other all the other demos that I showed uh, don't have, or you can download any of them from Docker Hub and and get all of them to work. Um, this one, I did not push to hub because um, I feel like the lawyers are probably circling the, the building right now like sharks or something and are gonna take me down. Um, so, and in fact, there was a certain company that started with N and ended with Nintendo um, that sued um, some another guy who did something very similar last week with the Commodore 64. So um, this, what do we got here? This is Donut Secret. Um, this is level 1-1, one, one, written in Unicode. <laughs> so um, I haven't put everything in here. Um, I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go. But um, yeah, that, that's, that it's, there's no gravity yet. You, can, you can't like jump on people or anything. But um, it actually works surprisingly well. Like there's not a lot of screen tearing or anything. Like Mario's going for a little walk through the pipes here. Oop, he's not gonna fall. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, a couple things about this. Um, I, the way that I did this, the way that the original game was written was like by, and for the NES is written with um, like eight pixel, eight by eight pixels for each of the blocks that go along with it. It's just kind of the way that the, the NES worked. Um, and I decided to do 16 by 16. It just made it easier. Because um, each one of these individual blocks um, that's being drawn here is just, you know, it's in a text file. It's, it's like 16 by 16 characters and um, it works pretty well. All right, um, and that, that's it. Thank you.
So if you guys want to know more information about this, um, I'm just pdev110 at Twitter if you want to follow me or um, see more of the stuff that I'm, I'm creating. Um, Blaze is also, what are you, the one mule? The one mule. Yeah, and uh, all the source code for this is available with kind of the exception of that last one because I don't want to get sued. Please don't sue yeah, me. Yeah, same, same for advice. I can't <laughs> give you the games. You can download those from whatever source you want. Um, I'm not going to tell you where to get them. but. Uh, the, the source code for the Docker file is out there on that GitHub, so I'm not going to pirate software. I'll let you do that. So, any questions? Uh, with my the stuff that I was showing, how do I, how do you yeah how do you, so the question was how do you handle interactions on the command line? Oh yeah, so so collisions yeah collision detection is always fun. Um, so. There's multiple ways of doing collision detection. The, 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 the way that you would normally do it is you create something called a rect, and what a rect is is you kind of like, it's hard if you have like a circle or like a ball or something like that, but what you do is you just basically have um, an outline and then you can, if you use the rect, if the rects are overlapping, then you can, you can do something with So if you remember back in that part where I was showing the, um, the, the clear the screen, update the sprites, and then draw them. In the update routine, you would have um, something in there that would go and, and look to see whether or not those two rects were overlapping. I have not written uh, collision detection into the, the, the uh, Go ASCII sprite library, but that might be a good pull request or feature request. Uh, yes, I did. So the space. So the question was uh, for the text invaders. Um, there was collision detection, and the way that I did that one was it was one point inside of a rect instead of two rects overlapping. Any questions? So I was wondering, on the DOS games, did you have sound support? Um, because I did some embedding of X Windows applications in Docker a long time ago. I had to do all sorts of weird stuff with pulse audio sockets, and it would only work yeah. on Linux. So I was like, how did you solve that in? I, it's still a work in progress. I'm, uh, I've gotten it working. I just didn't have time to incorporate it into uh, these demos. The reason why is that the stack is completely independent of X, the X stack. So, mm -hmm. but to get it to work, you you have to have some kind of transcoder, uh, which uh, so you basically get Pulse installed. You get uh, the Pulse server up and running, and then you get the socket working, and then you you can use like VLC. Uh, VLC Knox is like a, uh, a third, like a CLI version without all the GUI stuff for VLC, and then it can transcode the output from Pulse into like an MP3 stream, and then you can use the like for what I was trying to do is put that back into the browser. Yeah. So the, for the browser there, I was just using an audio tag and just playing the stream out. It just connects on when you start the uh, the web page, connects to that stream, and then it would stream whatever Pulse was out. So whatever DOS box was doing under the hood, this is the part I'm, I'm working on right now. Is, uh, is getting the, the DOS box output to come back through that stream. And so um, once I get that working, I'll, I'll probably update my library, my, my Docker file, just so the Docker games, uh, the DOS games will have audio and video in the browser. So that's, that's kind of my, that's my, my approach. It just adds so much weight to the container. It's like, oh man, this is just getting really, really heavy. <laughs> but yeah, that's all. Awesome, thank you. Any further questions? Anyone has? Uh, did you encounter any latency issues, um, like between the I/O and uh, on on the dust games? Yeah, with um, player controls. It's actually fairly uh, it's fairly responsive. So, like, I, I didn't notice any lag unless there was like just bad internet connection. So it's really depending on the late, how fast your connection is, but like the, the gains here, uh, the demos I was giving here, they were playable uh, when, when I was prepping for on site here and I was uh, playing through a couple levels of Commander Keen and, and Prince of Persia just to see if it, how well it would perform. And it's, it's, it, it's not any more noticeable than like if you were streaming uh, like, for, like just 
first person shooter over streaming like on uh, a game service or something like that. It's pretty quick. So I wasn't. That was running over Wi Fi as well, too. Yeah. And it was fine. I didn't Probably see any like noticeable input lag or, 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 or even, the, even the shearing on the screen wasn't too bad. So, you know, I thought it was acceptable for, for gaming, especially over the internet. So. All right. Any other questions or we are done? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>